Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode. I'm going to be going again into the world of React because sadly I do enjoy it. I always want to do more topics on this channel, but I just have a lot of fun with React. I don't want this to be a React only channel, but you know, sometimes it feels like that, but you know, do what you love, right? Today, I'm going to be delving back into the world of this new experimental concurrent mode in React. Uh, in particular today, I want to be answering the question of how does suspense work? Simple question. Let's see what that means. In case you are not familiar with suspense or concurrent mode, I strongly recommend you check my previous video out where I kind of delve into that world of suspense and concurrent mode to give you an overview. Today, we're going to be doing a more of a deep dive, just answering the question, how does suspense work? Here we have an example provided straight from the React docs for suspense, where you have this page that's being loaded with profile details and a profile timeline. We have two suspense boundaries that control how React renders the UI while data is being loaded. So if you refresh the page here, loading profile, loading posts. To review, we have here the outer suspense boundaries shows loading profile because it's just for the profile details page. And then when that data is loaded, this fallback goes away and we just rendered this content. And then if this takes longer than the details page, we'll show the loading posts fallback. And when that's done loading, we'll then show the profile timeline UI. That's we see a loading profile, loading posts, bing. So how does this work? The thing to look at here, and I think that they note in the documentation on concurrent mode, is that concurrent mode, when you're using suspense for data fetching, you should not be triggering that initial loading of data within the render function. I don't know why. I hope to find out. But for now, I'm going to take it at face value. Here we have from this fake API loading profile data, and this returns this resources object. If you scroll down to both the profile details and the profile timeline components, you can see here the profile details is taking resource.user and calling a read function. Just like in the timeline, it's calling resources post.read. So user and posts. And this is the data that's being shown on the page. And the thing to know here is that this function is returning data that may not yet be available. There's some API call happening that when this read call is hit, may not have yet completed. So there's some magic happening behind this read function that tells React to, instead of rendering empty content in here, to render this fallback. Again, we have loading profile. When that's there, we got the user value and we show it here. So Let's delve into this fetch profile data function. This is a, for example, purposes only. This is not, I mean, maybe it's production ready. I don't know. You have this fetch profile data where it's calling fetch user, fetch post. If you look at these two functions, we can see that these are kind of fake API calls where it's adding a timeout, but it's essentially a promise because all Ajax calls are going to be either callbacks but mostly promises and when it's done it's going to resolve with that value same thing with posts it's just doing the regular old promise that's just faking an api call but we see here is that this function is actually returning an object of user and post and we're actually wrapping these promises in this function called wrap promise and that's where the core behavior of suspense kicks in there's this comment here that's important that says um, suspense integrations implement a contract like this to integrate with React. This is the contract that React requires from your application code so that your application code can tell React that things are not yet ready yet and, and to use the suspense boundaries fallback UI instead. So here's the promise and we have here, we're chaining off this promise and waiting for it to either be resolved or errored. And we have these two local state variables, status and result. So let's take the case when the API is not yet complete, when things are still loading over the network. When you call that read function, what's going to happen is it's going to say status equals pending by default. 
And what you're actually what your code does is it throws suspender. Suspender is a new promise created from the dot then function here. So what you're doing here is you are throwing a promise, which is a weird idea, but one that the React code leverages, such that when you go into here and you call dot read, this function is going to throw a promise. And because React has code that is anticipating this, essentially there's some code around profile details. I mean, this is the, the worst example that I'm gonna do. Uh, let's do this. This is all pseudocode. Don't try this at home. Uh, in when React's trying to render this, it's going to say uh, uh, result equals profile uh, React uh, create element, right? Because that's how things work. Uh, profile details like that. When it tries this, when it tries to use this, which is going to invoke this, it's actually going to catch this here, and then React's going to know, oh. It's not ready, and it's actually going to wait and, and know internally to then use this fallback. So that's the pending state. Let's go back into here. So if you were to call this any number of times, it's going to keep throwing that suspender so that React knows that things are not yet ready. Let's say that it completes the promise resolved. We have the status set to success, which is mostly used for this if statement down here, and we save the result in result. So if the status is success, then we just return the success, such that when you call dot read, the returned result is the result of that promise. Like that post is going to be equal to here. It's going to be result, right? And result is being set to R, which is the result of that promise. And that's what you get, which is kind of making promises that are async kind of feel sync without using async await, which is, you know, weird. If there's an error, same thing, status error, result error, and here it's actually going to throw the error object where React will inspect it to know that it's an error object. And then if there is an error boundary, it'll then use the content in that error boundary. This is the core contract required from async data of yours to React so that you can then use suspense error boundaries to control how you show content on your page. Hopefully this gets your mind thinking about how you can kind of make your own abstractions around this contract to make your applications leverage suspense. Again, as the, the documentation pages say, uh, suspense is the engine. It's not a ready to go application of that engine where you know, you have, uh, what's an example, uh, portals, React portals. That was an already built and ready to use implementation of how to render React code elsewhere on your DOM page. There's no core construct that you have to kind of like adhere to to get that to work. That was just ready to go. That is not the case for Suspense. Suspense is definitely a lower level lever to control how your async data behaves in accordance with React. It's a hard thing to kind of make an abstraction that applies for everyone's application, which is why they took kind of this, you know, exposed from the internals through an API that hopefully is easy enough to read, to, to use. Um, I mean, if you had some, if you had your own self-contained API library, you could potentially, and everything was encapsulated, you could potentially make a React version of that that would throw the promises as they were being loaded that you could potentially just use them in line where you can actually have there be, you know, um, uh, more data equals my API library dot, uh, my react API library dot user details. And it would just call that. And then you'd be able to use that right in line. So that's kind of the thing that you could potentially do. Hopefully that kind of gave you a under the hood look into how suspense works. It's a contract, it's primitive, it's not built for consumption straight out of the gate, but it's some APIs that lets you kind of tell React how to behave. Uh, to say that you need it by default in every application is probably overkill. 
but if you do get the skill where you have that flexibility that you need, now you can do that with React. And hopefully it's interesting to see this way of throwing a promise that kind of tells React how it should behave from there. Interested, if you have any questions about this, please throw it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Welcome to become a Patreon subscriber as well to support this channel. And I will see you again next week with brand new content as always. Till then, we'll see ya. Bye-bye.